Yes, 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 yeah! Happy Friday! Happy, happy Friday! Friday, it's the Friday happy hour. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you. Oh, here are your flowers. Let me give you your flowers real quick. Oh, man. Ladies and gentlemen, I just I just want to just say I'm so, so, so happy we made it to the weekend. It's pretty much here. It's pretty much here. And I just want to just say big special shout out to you, wherever you are, what, whatever part of the world you're in. And uh, I am here joined by some special, special, special distinguished friends again. You've seen their faces before. I like to just go ahead and be like, all right, all right, all right, right now. I like to welcome my man Reese. Reese is in the building. What's up, Reese? All good, power. How are you? Oh, I'm superb. I'm superb. I'm waiting on that. Here we go. I'm waiting on that. I keep checking. I keep checking the timeline. I keep checking Twitter. Fabrizio, show me the sign. <laughs> the only sign we need is a, is a bill sign. Hey. <laughs> I also want to say joining Reese and I is my men. You've seen them before. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to welcome Eddie. What's good, my guy? Reporting for duty, sir. Let's yes, get this sir, yes. going, man. I want man. Go God, the here we go for this podcast right here, man. Here we go. Eddie Soldier. <laughs> you know, you know. I'm waiting on that here we go. Let's actually talk about the here we go that we're waiting on, guys. Because um, first of all, first of all, I just want to just start this and just say um, uh, wh- wh- what's happening with the, with the Men United sale update. Like, um, what do you, information is coming up every hour, something new is popping up, something, somebody credible says something, somebody not so credible says something. So I just want to just go ahead and just start with maybe you, Reese, just walk us into it and just let us know what you've been hearing and what's going on so far with the Men United um, sale. From what I have seen, the we are in this like obviously the stage two situation. Obviously, the the final bids were due to be in by nine o'clock tonight. From what I've heard, the the front runners obviously are a uh, uh, Sheikh Jassim uh, from uh, representing the Qatari group. Obviously, he's got the the nine two foundation, who seems to be the popular uh, the popular choice for fans, depending on where you are in the world, or just because it's it just assimilates to you. If that's what you want, mm-hmm. then that's that's fine. If you don't want Qatar, that's fine. Um, there's a there's a reason why I'll come on to that very soon because I think it's a real mm-hmm. testament to um, preference seems to be a real problem right now, and I'll, I'll touch on that very shortly. Uh, the other one, obviously, is um, uh, Jim Ratcliffe, uh, who we know that he's raised his bid, but it's not, it's according to reports, it's not near the value that uh, Jassim's actually offered. So it looks like he's still the front runner, and then we do have. Um, Tony Ziliasius, uh, the Finnish owner, who is less in terms of the net worth. If you really want to base everything on net worth, he is less value than Jim Ratcliffe. From what I've seen, like he has not been, he has done an interview, but his inter- his entire process and his bid has not been taken seriously. I'm thinking, yeah. like, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure the reason why. I think it's just because like, he may not be seen as a. A valid option, or he's coming too late after the board after the rain group have already moved stages on. I think they've just taken him as like, well, you basically you've just taken too long, mate. Tongue in cheek, like just serious. And I've also seen today as well, but I don't know how legitimate it is. But he's also come out today saying that himself, Ratcliffe, and Jasim should all band together and buy United together, which I think says all really about this guy. That I think he's just. I think he's just wasting time just trying to generate interest in himself, his own businesses, which, to be fair with United, you're going to get interest anyway. Um, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a global phenomenon. And obviously, oh. you've, still got, you've still got Elliot uh, Management Group, the, the big financial gulf of America themselves, who yeah. still want to be involved in the minority involved. stake. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Still want to be involved in the minority stake, whether they back another yeah. owner... Uh, potential or they will potentially fund the Glazers to stay but it means there'll be less Glazers at the club it would just be Avram and Joe uh, sorry not uh, Avram and Joel yeah it would just be the two of them not the entire siblings they'd all yeah. be sold out yeah 
Looking yeah. at it though, like I'm on the front, like for me, like owners wise, I think I think it's gonna go to the Qataris. I think it's gonna go to the Qataris. But this is where I come back to what I said earlier on about preference. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think it comes down to like what do you realistically want? Like, do you think he is the one that is actually the right man for the to buy the club or is it Ratcliffe? But the the reason I'm asking is because a lot of credible journalists have been obviously making uh, reports about this all week. They have been producing like uh, pieces of interest to read. It's like my my Mike Keegan, um, Miguel Delaney. They've all been they've all been producing interest and content to actually look at regarding mm-hmm. the takeover. But the more you actually divulge into it, they're making the consistent points. But it doesn't matter who you are, whether you be a journalist or a content creator, just reporting, you're getting abuse over it. A True. lot of abuse is being directed at them, which I think is completely unnecessary yeah. because they're just doing they're just doing their job. At the end of the mm-hmm. day, like, a journalist is paid to report on this. Like Delaney, yes, by the way, for anyone who doesn't know, Miguel Delaney is a Liverpool fan. He is a Liverpool fan. But, he is, but he is a credible journalist. In, okay. his prof- in his profession, he is credible. And he is against the whole Qatari ownership to United. He's okay. against that. And he's put, he has put his reasons why. I'm against it for the political standpoint. I've always been that way. I'm against the polit- political side. <laughs> Okay. If they come in, if they come in, and it's all about United in general, and they want to put the focus on that, and they don't want to hide away from their own political misdeeds, mm-hmm. they don't want to say mm-hmm. we're doing this to sports wash. It's general mm-hmm. interest. Then mm-hmm. I'm willing to, I'm willing to accept that. Ratcliffe, mm-hmm. I haven't mm-hmm. seen enough from him to suggest what he really wants. Yeah. Is he willing? To, is he going to fund the club his way? Is any else going to be the main take on it? I don't know. But I just want to see a genuine owner come in and actually genuinely care about our club, not somebody who's just going to come in and rinse it even more than it already is. I want genuine interest. And I think the biggest thing is, though, is, like I said before, it's preference because no matter who you prefer, you're yeah. going to get slaughtered for it. And I don't think that really is fair because what's the point so, of having an opinion? It's just so let, you're just going let to me talk. interject right there. Exactly. Or rather, like, riff of what you're saying because um there's no s- such thing as an ethical billionaire you know so i agree uh, so it's 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 if you can dig out and see like what it, how that person became who they were and uh, most of the time you'll find something somewhere that you can highlight if you want and it then becomes a game of like oh uh, a moral you know uh uh cat and mouse situation of like which one are you with which <laughs> what's your priorities or which fight uh, what's your what's your cause you know so the, so let's let's actually actually that gives me a I very good way to you eddie to say pose this question to you and say say the qataris put the qataris aside right and say they don't they don't get it who 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 which owner would you go with and why you know, given what you the information that you you know so far, and by the way, I, I recognize you didn't you didn't you know give your side of like uh, uh, what you've been hearing so far yeah. with the news. Yeah, because I've not, well, you know? yeah, it's not, I've not really been following it t- uh, too much mm-hmm. because I, I don't like um, like the the hype, especially when you go on Twitter, you see all these outlets coming up with uh, updates, and it's just literally like just pedantic just saying you know like hour by hour okay this guy's made a bid and yeah. then it turns out to not be a valid source you have a lot of patience just you know, for him know. sorry to interrupt yeah. that's for kush to deal with like these constant updates because like we're, we're we're so wanting to like have these glazers out of there that like, like reese is saying man we need people that yeah. come in and and care for the club because we're seeing like with the glazers i mean uh, um, Reese brought up, you know, the the ethical standpoints and stuff. It's like we've been dealing with Glazers, right? Who, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, they brought bought the club on debt. They've done like loads of underhanded things. So yeah. that yeah. kind of gives the probable cause that they were doing shady stuff behind the scenes as well. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. before they took over Man United. So it's like it's like what um, Power Hour was saying. There, mm-hmm. There's a lot of billionaires that are going to have skeletons in their closet where they're. They've abused ethics. They've done things that are underhanded, mm-hmm. sneaky. 
violating, you know, maybe violating human rights, stuff like that. But um, with the yeah, media, especially with the Western media, we see a lot of exposure of other people's dirty laundry uh, from the rest mm -hmm. of the world. They're not really mm -hmm. going to show it on, you know, people in America, people in, in England and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. um, anyway, coming to the question at hand, I, I want mm -hmm. the Qataris there. I, I, I can't put the Qatari cash to the side. I mean, if I, okay. By the way, you can duck the other question of, uh, you still are barring the Qataris. I still want you to still go to the, 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 the other two choices that are at least that we publicly know, but go ahead. Sorry, yeah, I sorry, mean, I had to, <laughs> to, yeah, to well, make I mean, sure. I mean, Ra yeah, Ratcliffe, I, I, do, I do like the idea, like the kind of, um, um, ideal, the, the fantasy that he's like a Man United fan at heart, yeah, so yeah. obviously if you, if he's basically a Man United fan with good business sense, it does uh -huh. it does make sense that he, he should be a, a front runner if the Qataris drop out because he what This is the season, the Chelsea guy. season ticket holder, okay, alright go ahead, it, go ahead it, I, That's the first time I heard that, I thought he only yeah, he didn't it. Know. yeah, I thought, yeah, I thought he's he only I thought you only he, is a, he, is a yeah, he is a United fan. Yeah, he is a United fan, but he spent a lot of his time growing up in London, so he does have a Chelsea oh. season ticket. He did, he did try to buy Chelsea uh, previously. He did try to buy them before. And that's purely that because he's got a Chelsea season ticket over a United one. That's what we're saying, yeah. I'm not sure if he's got no. a United season ticket, but he did have a Chelsea one because he did stay in London, but he does... He does support United and he does have that he does have that soft spot for Chelsea because he was based in London. I find it bizarre as well, but so okay. So I guess I guess given what you're saying, Reese is you can't fault him because it means he has a really high love for football. He was like, I have to stay connected to football while I'm in London. So it makes sense. I to, think he was to... I think he was like that, but I think in the sense of it, I still think it's crazy that he was supporting two high Premier League clubs. So I just, it just that part just doesn't make sense to me, you know, but like that's just that's just him, but but, but the thing is, it will is be it? an upgrade on the Glazers no matter what, even if he is a Chelsea fan. It's like he will still have that, that footballing uh brain, you know. He, mm -hmm. he the Glazers, uh, what were they doing? They were managing, not managing, they were owning um, what is it, um, the NFL club, was it Tampa, Ta Buccaneers? Uh, Tam Tampa, Tampa Bay. Bay Buccaneers? Yeah, so, so they, they were coming into um, a sport where you know. They didn't really know what they were doing. I mean, we've seen what they've done with the board. We've been moaning about the director of football, about the yeah. scouting network, about all the, these things for too long. So if if Ratcliffe comes in, at least he will have the football brain. He, I mean, he's, he's uh, he owns Nice. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I've heard that certain fans don't like what he's doing with Nice, but at least he's a football guy. I'm just yeah, looking yeah, for an yeah, yeah, upgrade yeah. on these Blazers, man. That's, that's what I'm looking for, man. But by the way, thank you, thank you, thank you for saying that. I mean, at the end of the day, we just need to move on to the next chapter. And, and I just want to just say a shout out to everybody that's tuned in. Thank you so much, Niall, Kush, Solo, Lil Yo Yo in the building. I see you, <laughs> Lil Yo Yo says Thomas, the tank engine bringing everyone up. <laughs> Yo, um, um, but sort of puppy must. No, but so I didn't millionaire to come by <laughs> Man United. I wish, I wish, I wish. I'm a, I've actually um, been wondering where are the African billionaires? Because there is some. There's gotta be a Nigerian, there's gotta be a South yeah, African. There is. There's there's Aliko Dangote. I don't yeah. know really football, but he's a billionaire. And he's, he's got, got, a just... of, got a lot of um, what do you call it? Um uh clout in Nigeria. So like you know, what I mean he's got mm. that money where he could yeah. siphon off a bit. And invest in football, but I, I don't think he's a football fan though. Who's the IPL guy that's always been talked about buying United? The cricket guy in, in India, like the richest guy in India, and he owns the entire league. Like I can't remember his name, but he seems to be like every like circles around every year going like United fans are like we want this guy. I'm like, who? Like I know he owns the cricket league, but I don't know his name. I'm like, I'm like, come on. Like somebody in the live chat will tell me, will back, come and reply and bang on tell me who I'm talking about. But uh, we need a football guy, don't we? Though I mean, come yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah, they, maybe, they, it might, might be a repeat of the Glazer situation where like it's just they're coming from a different sport to come and try yeah. and le learn the game. We don't need people coming to try and learn the game when you're literally, um, uh, you know, trying to own the biggest club in England, or, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. if not the world. We, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? This is not like Everton or whatever. You know, this yeah. is a top club. I mean, we need some we need some football people to come yeah. in. 
and yeah. renovate everything like, then. Renovate even, the even if we have to wait, even if we have to wait a few years when the new owner comes in for a project to be properly stable, just fixing things behind the scenes, like even if it's like one year they focus on like, say the debt doesn't get, I don't know if uh, she just seems going to clear the debt all in one. So she, yeah. So say for example, he says he's going to clear the debt. If, if for example, he doesn't clear the whole 1.5 billion debt in a year, if he reduces that by what half of that was that 750 million, 750 million pounds, pretty much 100 million pounds less than what the Glazers actually jumped on as mm-hmm. his debt. If they bring that down by then, he can then invest so, like he can use some of the revenue that we've got at the club, like in joint with his own money, and invest in infrastructure or True invest that. in the playing yeah. squad. He can do those smart exactly. things, like. Exactly. Yeah, I, mean, I, don't think, I don't think it was just yo, on one year though. Yo, yo, I got I, I, I to pause you guys real quick. I got to pause you guys real quick and say, um, by the way, we haven't done the, the customary cheers and salute. And before we do that, I'd like to welcome somebody into the building. My brother Kudus. Yo, what's up? What's you, up? Get, you, get, you get the here we go. Here. <laughs> <laughs> what's good, brother? Yo, I'm good. Sorry, guys. It took me so Please long get your episode. beverage, get your water, whatever you have next to you, and yeah, uh, on, uh, let's do the cheers. yes. <laughs> cheers, guys. Cheers, cheers, cheers. I'm cheers, a cheers. Pepsi guy. Okay, at least it's not seven and up. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was water, it was water last time. Sponsored by Pepsi. Exactly. Don't tell, exactly. The viewers, don't, don't tell the viewers, they'll try and get my contract. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it. It, it's it's bro yeah we've been literally just talking about the the where we are right now what we've been hearing how it, you know information has been coming out every basically every hour you know and and uh you know what have you heard so far in terms of the sale and why your thoughts with it um, bro i think uh there's a there's a qatari account on twitter i think i'm gonna have to block him because the guy posted mbappe today and he's just he's playing with my heart he's, he's just playing with my heart <laughs> Bro, I feel like I know yeah, that I can't so get talking it. about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It, he's been getting everything. Oh, they've been getting everything right the last couple of like um two months. So far, like... yeah. I think um the latest news I saw was that um Sheikh Jasim's bid, I think, is what the Glazers are asking for, the six billion. Um, yeah. whereas Sir Jim Ratcliffe is just about uh, a bit under on five point something. So I mean, it's it's in the hands of the Glazers. Like they don't care about us. They don't care about the fans, the club. They they, they just care about their money. So, if the bid is um, six billion and and that is what they're asking for, I mean, they have no way of saying that you know we didn't get our the, what we wanted. So we're staying. You know, the price is there. This is what you've put up for sale. We've matched it. Now it's it's up to you to decide. But they need to they need to make a choice really quick because this is going to affect our um, summer transfer window. I mean, I want to buy Oshiman, I want to buy Mbappe, I want to buy Kadeshkelia, <laughs> I want to buy Kim Jong, I want to buy everybody. So yes. yeah, they need to they need to hurry up. Um, but bro, we're we're nearly there. The promised land is there. I never thought in my lifetime I would see the Glazers leave Manchester United, and I mean, mm, yeah. it could happen in the next two months. So. Yeah, it's it's looking like good times. <laughs> it's looking comment, like... There's a comment that actually you said, Kudos, I actually I, I completely agree with it in, in that sense is um it wasn't about the the money, it was actually it just forward that. When you look at United itself, it's down to the Glazers. The worst thing about all this as well is when they bought the club, they leveraged debt on us of over eight hundred plus million. Mm-hmm. And they're go- they're gonna make nearly five billion pounds profit. It's crazy. And that includes the, and that includes the debt they've allowed wow. to build in this club. I mean, there's sports washing that people talk about that is constantly in the media, and in different circumstances, of course, that will always be a conversation that people just cannot avoid. But this is five. This was it's five point one five billion pounds profit, something like that. That is scandalous. Yeah, I think uh, as as owners, the Glazers are absolutely horrible. But as really? businessmen, they have to go down in history as one of the most yeah. genius businessmen ever. I mean, they bought the club for nothing and they're making 
probably over a six billion profit. And not to mention, it also gives them opportunities to do businesses with Qatar or whoever buys the club, or maybe they go use that money now and buy Liverpool. Yeah. So, yeah. Who but, knows? Also, <laughs> but also, it knows how, many, how much like dividends they were taking out over the years. Yeah. So, like, it'll be six billion plus all the dividends they've made. They, they're evil geniuses. The way they have, <laughs> like, not just bought the club for pennies and then. <laughs> Just made all that profit, man. I, I can't wait, man, to these guys go. Elon, Elon Musk. Elon Musk went down the Guinness Book World of Records this year as the man who lost the biggest amount of um, <laughs> net worth in history. That's a Guinness Book World of Record. The Glazer yeah. family are going to go into the Guinness Book World Records as the biggest sale merchants in history. I'm like, <laughs> that's just one record you don't want to ever see. Yeah. But for the sense of it, for us, it's great that they're always going. I, I it's think just people because that they've done it. I think people forget as well that the Glazer family are actually not billionaires in their own right, as in they're billionaires based on the assets that they own. But yeah. after selling Manchester United, they will officially actually become billionaires in terms of what their net worth is. So, I mean, it's it's a crazy move, crazy, crazy move. So, 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 I mean, at the end of the day, is it? It seems like the Qataris are very determined to, to, to. It's by any means. This, this, in a weird way, is one of one of those re- things that's kind of reflective of like what a very stubborn transfer uh, dealing would be like. You know, say you re- the coach really wants a certain player, and you know you're meeting a very stubborn owner like a Daniel Levy of a, a whatever club or whatever, and then you know they. They, they they're just playing the the hardest you know game ever and then you know if the if the if the owner wants the player they go ahead and they pay the money they take out the checkbook they don't say they don't you know it's like don't speak just pay you know that that Mourinho um um a, a, a phrase you know so 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 I mean it's just exciting times but I wanted to pose a question to you Kudus before we get into the next little segment by the way um. <laughs> Um, and everybody that's tuned in, thank you so much. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so. Kudus, if the Qataris don't, um, in the you know, in the unfortunate event that the Qataris maybe don't, maybe, maybe don't, you know, I don't live in that world. <laughs> that world does not exist. I, I just want to ask this because, like, I don't know if you've heard Thomas, um, uh, how do you pronounce it? Z- Zili- Ziliakas? Thomas Ziliakas. Yeah. yeah, Thomas Z. I don't know. Have you heard Thomas Z speaking? I have heard him the, speak. The man I mean, understands the fan channels. They, they, he wants so much fan interaction. Have you heard that interview? I have heard that, and I think it is very idealistic because his his intentions are in the right place to be fair because mm-hmm. i think that's what a lot of people wanted a, a sort of fan uh, ownership with the clubs something like they have in germany with the plus one and um, with their fans but the issue is at this point in time manchester united is, uh, is actually in the ruins in terms of infrastructure and building a new stadium women's team youth academy um get, get, gaining more exposure in the middle eastern countries were actually in ruins so while he does have very ideal idealistic um aims we still need to get money to build a new stadium we can't use our own money we need money uh, to invest in the first team we need money to invest in the women's team we need money to invest in the youth team so how is that going to work if fans are putting up 50 percent to buy the club i mean what billionaire wants to buy the club with half of the fans and on top of that i mean you go online and people can't even decide whether or not we get rid of david de gea people can decide who our starting right back is so how is that going to work when we we want to make footballing decisions and then how do we determine who's a manchester united fan that's actually going to be purchasing the club you could have liverpool fans buying shares or whatever and maybe in mount instead of signing frank de young so there's no way to really judge it or to really quantify it and then on top of that i know we're buying manchester united but obviously we're going to be making profit as well hopefully going down the years how does that work do you get a return on your money do you get a return on your shares do we become dividend or do we become you know shareholders and receive dividends yeah. there's too many external factors to 
for it for it to work for the concept to work but i mean fair, fair play to him you know for for going out there to actually try and do it but i'm sorry we just we we, we need that arab money uh, get, get me the oil get yeah. me dripping in arab money that's what i, I want i agree with that i agree with that i think the one concern is um and it's actually i've actually had this conversation with a few friends of mine today actually funnily enough and it's not about um it's not about the ownership. It's actually like if the fans actually had control, it's the fans actually running the club. I completely agree. And you've mentioned specifically transfers. Like transfers dictate like how well you're actually going to, how well you actually get on with your owners as well. Do they buy into what you want as a club? You want to have like you want to have the best team. You want to have the best players at your club. You also want to have a team that's actually going to compete to win. And if we don't get, if, and if those fans. Like, for example, like there's fans at the club who want like Jude Bellingham and there's fans who want Frankie de Jong who favour one of the other, you know there's going to be a massive divide and it kicks off. The minute it kicks off, mm. you're just going to have those fans rebel and say, no, we want those, we want that 50% replaced with different fans. So I agree, like your whole integrity of being a fan will be completely questioned. I would love the idea of like fans being involved to that sense, but as an owner, I don't know if fans, I don't think we should actually have fans own our club. But I think we should have a, I think we should have a strong voice within the club that is consistently in discussion with the owner and we're taken seriously by as, as owners. No. Nah, I mean, I mean it, it can work though, Reese. It, it can work though, because we're seeing Bayern Munich, their success oh, they've had with, the, with the 50 plus one um, framework, the, 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 the way they've dominated that yeah. league, the way that they keep getting in top borders. Like, we look at their team this season. They were clever though. But the question with that though is, is that actually something that is, say, in the Bundesliga? So not just Bayern Munich, so um, maybe Schalke is mm -hmm. you know, involved as well. That's something that it's actually yeah. in the Bundesliga rather than the Premier League. Imagine if you were the only club in the Premier League that 50% of a, uh, was owned by fans. I mean, does would it really work? But I do it's get where you're coming from. Yeah, with it. it just depends yeah. on like um, what do you call it. If the owner is is knowing how to do that framework of of, biz, of, of business, that's the thing. It's like you Thank need someone to come and implement the policy. Like that's how you run yeah, any business. You have to have the policy where um, the, the the majority stakeholder um, discusses with other stakeholders on you know the vision going forward. I mean, by a minute, I mean, how how many trophies have they won? They've won Champions Leagues. A lot of the times they've won trebles. Like I like five, I said before, five yeah, Champions, five Champions Leagues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five Champions Leagues five Champions and League, uh, two trebles. Two yeah, trebles, and yeah. then if you look at their transfer policy, man, I mean, every season, apart from the striker, I don't know why they just got a uh, cheaper Moten up there. Even though, of course, they're genius. Because he's scoring a, a bit <laughs> Yo, Cheaper Moten's yeah. agent needs one of the biggest yeah. raises he can ever get. He needs a Nobel Prize or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he's going under that. the radar, you know. <laughs> yeah. Funny thing is, so so that that the, the actually balling for Bayern. Yeah, just to finish off the transfers that they keep getting in, yeah. it doesn't seem like the, the like the ownership has any beef with the fans over like the policy going forward, over the vision. Mm. Like the manager, I mean, we could get into the, uh, the, the fact that they fired their manager controversially. I don't know why Nogelsmann has gone, but like before That's that, hard, the managers yeah. that they've got in, Hein Jupp Heinkes, all these guys, and then yeah. you know, they have people like Kimmich, there are people like uh Sane. Sane was a great buy, by the way. Uh, uh Musiala, Mane himself, yeah. Musiala, amazing buy. Um, Gnabry, like, that was a steal. Yeah, so Alfonso it's, it's Davies. About who, it's just about getting in the, the right people. Like if they were to do a, a 50 plus one, it's about getting in the right people that know how to do that policy. If they don't know how to do it, then obviously, yeah, just don't even, don't even try and experiment with that because it could be carnage. It could be worse than what the, what the Glazers were doing. So, yeah. yeah. See, the one the, thing the, that the, helps the 50 plus one rule is the Bundesliga's TV deal rights as well. Yeah. It's not as big as the Premier League, so it's easier to implement. Cause, like, it's so easy to implement the 50 plus one rule in Germany because they will never, like, even though the Bundesliga, depends on your opinion, but I think it's a good league to watch. I've watched it for years. Like, yeah. It has a style, it has a way to impress the fans and it claws you in, but it's so easy to implement that way. It wouldn't work in Italy because they've got a high, slightly higher broadcast. It would work in France because France is bust. But yeah. when you look at it from that sense in the Premier League, I don't know if it would ever work, but if it came in, I would like to see it work out, like how like, like us, Newcastle, Man City, how mm -hmm. they would cope. 
just because it floods the way down, but I think the only thing that stops it as well is the fans again, though, they aren't always going to have the same collective um, vision. And you could have one different opinion and you could have, say, five or six shareholders who have something different and you just completely get blanked. I think if it's not unanimous, if it's not unanimous we're humped. Yeah, I, I would yeah. love to see the idea work, though, in the Premier League. I think it'd be good to see it work, but I think if it's not unanimous by who's on, who's in control, it really would be a cause the, of concern. The idea could work, but I think the major part of his of Thomas's bid or proposal is the fact that one, I think you're offering three point eight billion, so you're not meeting the Glazers' um, <clears throat> asking price. Yeah. Two, where's the money coming in to invest into the club and into the infrastructure? And then three, going forward, are you clearing the debt? Are you, you know, going to be taking out dividend? Oh, there's so many things that we actually just don't know um, about it. But yeah, the, the 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 fan concept is nice, and I would see. I think that the Qataris as well would also include the fans in everything that they are doing so we would still probably get our, our voice across. I mean, I think the Qataris were the first ones to say that, you know, we'd be included in um, who we sign and stuff like that and they wanted to make it interactive. So yeah, people's um, opinions and voices will still get across which is what matters at the end of the day. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. just say this. Yes. Just a last okay. thing from me. Uh, okay. Like, yeah, it's, it's a very tricky kind of framework. Like, um, if Man United were to do this, it, it mm. would be responsible if, like, they could um, ca- kind of get, like, a consultant to come in and show, like, it, let's say po- possibly if they could actually get someone that's actually worked for, for Bayern Munich and, and is familiar with the 50 plus one thing, you hire them yeah. to come in and basically advise on how to do, like, order the policy, all of that kind of thing. Like, that could work. It, it, yeah, it, it could mm. work because to, to try and just... Um, freestyle it and, and you know work your way through it try and learn on the job by yourself that's that, that's the thing this guy has freestyle vibes in him in terms of the fact that you know like i i i love how he was highlighting the the fan involvement as as a big part of his campaign but the thing about it like like it came off it, it, it was almost to the extent where it felt like you know it would have an app where where we would maybe like vote ten hug at halftime if you want the fan opinion take take out Fred from McTominay like he, he he's so idealistic in his talking that it, it but yeah. but it but also like positively inviting you know in a in a weird sense because he he feels it feels you know it feels like when he said like um a billion I remember the first thing that struck me what he said was like oh buying a club for a billion it's not like buying a boat. You're buying you're you're buying something that you now actually have to work for, and I was just yeah. like, "Damn, you got like me!" And, and he's man. got all the things. It feels like I'm I'm not I'm not like you know Thomas uh, Z in at all, but right now, but like I, I, there was some things that he said that really really made me feel like this guy knows a little bit of what a li- there's a little bit of sense in him, you know, on his, on you know, above his shoulders. But the main thing is he, the, he didn't think his plan through. He didn't think the fact that, oh, with the fan involvement thing, what, how are you going to vet the fans and figure out, oh, rival fans will be interfering, you know, making sure that we're buying Chupo Muting, you know, <laughs> instead of uh, Osina. I mean, know? promoting could work over Veghorst, so, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you just know. I actually said that enough before we got big horse. I actually said I wanted Chupo Moting on that that free deal. I literally said let's get him. I actually did say that. It's on my Twitter. I mean, I think Chupo Moting is quality. I don't know yeah. why people don't see him. I think he's a quality player. I mean, I know he's played for PSG, and anyone sadly has to play for PSG needs to escape French football. But like, I just remember him at, at, at Stoke Greece when you were just. I know that's the fun, that's the funny part. He's went, he went I from think... Stoke. To but, but that's the thing. If I'm I think that league. that's more of a, a, an acknowledgement for him, because I mean, if you can do it on a wet, cold, rainy night in Stoke, you can do it anywhere, and yeah. he's gone and proven that that he can do it anywhere. So, and the fact yeah. that he dunked on all those teams in, cha- in the Champions League as well with Bayern, when yeah. like, people thought, no way, this guy's going to replace Lewandowski, and he's dunking on Barcelona, he's dunking, on, he's dunking on PSG back to back, and you're like, mm-hmm. you played for Stoke ten years ago, mate. <laughs> it's madness. Like, do you know how many goals he's got? Actually, I don't know how many goals. But is... uh, I know it's in double figures, but I don't know the exact number. The guy's mental. Oh, like, I think he, I think he's crazy. Like, 
I would just put in front of my team and just be like, just you stand there, do nothing. Just stand there, no defenders coming near you because they'll shit themselves. Yo, <laughs> yo. That's crazy. Yo, that Aggie's is fine, but he's so likable as well to watch the football. I think he's, he's just a classic number yeah, nine. Yeah, I, 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 I to have. Reese, I want to say go into the next segment of the show where we're, we're just gonna just play some 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 games that are, uh, you know, um, just sort of like, no, it's not necessarily to test our football knowledge. It's just mainly for sharing football information because some of these answers we may know, some of them we may not know. Least, you know, me included. The, the the say what? At least there's no at least there's no Liverpool fans here, Pavador, because you can't test your knowledge. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, so, so we got that right there, and and you know we're gonna go ahead and just like uh, spin the wheel and go ahead and be like, all right, let's see who's gonna go first. Um, by the way, don't forget to uh, subscribe if you haven't. We're gonna go ahead <laughs> and ask Reese, better, Reese, <laughs> Reese, 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 Reese. You get the first question of the day, Reese. The question is, my friend. Oh. Okay, so this was a, 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 a shout out to one of the reckless delegates that actually gave this idea, this question. So, um, okay. here it is. So, start, bench, or sell. So, start, sub, or sell, right? The all star way. So, start, Fair sub, enough. or sell. Elanga, Maguire, McTominay. Oh, yeah, fucker. Right. <laughs> um, do I have to put one in the same slot, or that, or can I change up? Because I'm, I'm thinking I want to be very honest. <laughs> go, you have to be very honest. You can, go All ahead. Right, um, I start none of them. I loan a Langer, <laughs> sell McTominay, sell Maguire. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, right, but okay, you gotta stick to the rules of the honest. game, though. <laughs> if I'm being all right, if I'm being honest. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> I would. Ah, oh, this is. Sell all three. I'm, I'm, I would sell all three. To be fair, I'm selling <laughs> Maguire. I'm selling Maguire. I don't think Maguire really offers us any qualities in in our centre back positions. And I think the fact that we're looking at De Sassi and we're looking at uh, Kim Jong May reflects that we're actually looking to improve in that position. So that makes it easier for me. Midfield, Sabitzer's quality. Fred is Fred. Like the guy can be. Amazing one day, he can be insane the next, but he's always at least given 100%. But the problem is, we are lacking in that area right now, and we do need to rotate. So it pains me to say this I'm probably starting McTominay and kill myself later, and then I'm loaning, <laughs> and then I'm loaning a Lang out because I think we're so stacked in the wing. Yeah, position. well, no, you have to sub in him. It's only start, start, sub, or sell, you know. So oh, you, you get start you're having a Langa come in as a substitute because you're starting I'm McTominay. I thought you said bench permanently, so start a Langa, sub McTominay, and then sell in Maguire. Like, you've gave me the safety. You said that I can all sub right. in. I'm starting a Langa for that sense because at least I've got okay. Pace. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. That was cool. a hard one. Oh, oh, oh. I didn't like that. That was cruel. That was tough, yeah. Like that. Well, which, which one would you go with, actually? Yeah, let's go ahead and buzz it around, actually. Oh, I'm curious, Eddie. Where, where, oh, where man, you they, they all suck, though, isn't it? They're all bad players. Yeah, but, I mean. but it's like those are the three players you have left. <laughs> I mean, with Elanga, I'm like, you know what I mean? I, I, I'm a little bit like disappointed that he didn't award. progress since when he was under Ralph. Because under Ralph, yeah, even though mm. people shit on Ralph too much, yeah. I mean, come on, Ralph was picking up a counter-attacking team trying to make them high press. I mean, should have had a lot of True. benefit in the doubt. But when he was coaching Ilanga, Ilanga was doing exactly what Ralph was saying, man, about, you know, making yeah. runs, all this kind of stuff. He was doing well. So I'm disappointed that, you know, this season, he's just looked really, he's looked worse than a lot of players that are just like, you know what I mean? He, looks, he, looks, he doesn't even look academy level this season. He got found mm -hmm. out. I think he got found out too quickly, and it's a shame. Yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, to answer the question, so start. I'm starting, I mean, Reese said start Elanga though, but that means you've got to either drop Rashford or Anthony. I'm putting, Rashford, I mean? through, I'm putting Rashford through the middle since Garnacho's injured. Oh, okay. You put through the middle, so what, up front or like number 10? What are you saying? 
But like, I'm putting Rashford as my starting striker, dropping Veghorst to oh, come yeah, off the yeah, bench like if he wants to. Oh, I actually like that. I might have to agree with Reese on, on, on starting a Langer then, because, you know what I mean? I, I want to see Veghorst mm. out of the team. Um, obviously, selling <laughs> Maguire. Maguire's just got to be, he's got to be gone. The, the fact that he's still got the captain's armband is a crime to football. Not just mm. Man United, it's a crime to anyone watching. Yeah, this guy that plays five minutes in a lot of games, yeah. he's still captain. Ridiculous. And then, yeah, McTominay sub. That, that's my... Uh, that's basically the same as recent, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. What is this guy talking about? He's probably still catching up with the with the stream. We've, we've talked about Root a long time ago. <laughs> wow. I, mean, I like, I like how you're going to I like his young Pressing. And what, what else do you do? Presses. Shout out to you, bro. <laughs> Shout out to I you, like, Omar. I like Veg. I like Veg, course, but I don't necessarily think he has the answer, even in the short term. But the one thing I will give him credit for, and I think this is fun. This is fun enough, accurate. At least he's actually came in and he's went. You know what? I'm not entirely United quality, but I'm just going to get on with it. He's been. Yeah. He's doing what he's been asked to do, and I think that's yeah. the only thing I can truly credit him for. Right. Okay, yeah, right. I, I, I give him credit for that too, but it's like. The, the way he runs, though, you know, when you just look at his specimen, like he looks like Maguire when he's running, uh, like his, his attempts on goal, it takes him like five chances to score. Like, uh, it's, right. sorry, but like, I can't wait to see him gone as well. So, to All right, well, well, let's br- quickly hear Kudus's um, uh, choices on, on, on the, the question and then move on to the next one, real I quickly. I think you, you guys are gonna hate me because I have a very controversial take on this. Um, oh, are you starting I, Maguire? You better I'm start actually Maguire. starting Maguire. I never, oh, no, I, in, in. I never thought the day would come where I'd say I am starting Maguire, but I'm going to start Maguire. The reason being, um, I'm guessing this is obviously be, on, on the owner step. Varane isn't available, so um, Maguire in the past few games, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think in the past few games, um, Maguire has actually improved. And you know, at the end of the day, when all um, when all said and done, when Ten Hag came in, we wanted these players to improve. We wanted them to be able to, you know, just even be a, a, a good backup. And Maguire's come in, and he's kept clean sheets. He's not made as much erratic um, mistakes. He's Ball progression actually is good. His passing is good. Um, he does a lot of long passes. Yeah. And it wasn't I think... against Leeds, by the way. Against Leeds, it was terrible. And it's it's yeah, 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 he does. He does a lot of long passes. I don't know if you I mean, I mean, he does have that one to to um Luke Shaw. The dang, he, he knows no, how no, to no, switch. not even that, but he does a lot of um long passes to Rashford. I, I think um we actually haven't noticed it now. I would like his progression to be more on the ground, but he does actually do a lot of um long passes, even for England, he does it as well. So I think just on that sense, I think Maguire is kind of a bit more. Uh, God, I can't believe I'm praising Maguire, but he's a bit more, um, what would I say, uh, first team, yeah. as in, not first team as in starting Oof. 11, but able to come into the first team material than I think Ilanga or McTominay. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to start Maguire. I'm going to sub on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm please, gonna... <laughs> are you trolling? Are you trolling to me? I'm actually right, not am I hearing the no, words no, that I'm know, hearing? No, I think it's funny, right? I know I am I'm, I'm not Maguire's fan. I, I do not like Maguire one bit. I think he is there's a lot of things I don't want to say online, but I think he is a waste of 80 million. Um, captain yeah, material, yeah. he's just not it at all. He has no leadership, he doesn't command his box, he he's um just he turns slower than an Arctic lorry. He yeah. just does. He, oh, he's not gifted with pace. I am. I, I I am. But I'm starting oh. him because I know Martinez is next to him. So Maguire, when you have someone to cover off for him, isn't the worst because we did have it under with um, Lindelof and Maguire for the first season under Ole. And to be honest, I think we had like the second best clean sheet in the Premier League. So it's not like there's. It's he's completely useless. There's still something that can be, you know, worked with there. So yeah, I'm gonna start Maguire. Um, I'm going to sub on Ilanga because I think Ilanga, fair enough, he's playing with the first team, but his development was actually rushed because under um, under Ragnik, he, his development was actually started under Ole, but when Ragnik came in, Ragnik needed someone, you know, quick impact. He had pace, he was hungry, he was ready to go, but I think he could have done with maybe coming on um, 
off the bench as a, as a youth player sub, getting cameos, being integrated into the team the way Garnacho was um, or the way Garnacho is at the moment. But I think we kind of just relied on Ilanga. I mean, look at the Atletico Madrid game in the Champions League. If not for Ilanga, we were we were screwed. So, um, yeah, I would I would sub in Ilanga because I think he, he does have talent. He's quick. He, he runs for days. Um his shooting needs a lot of work, but he is trying. You see him putting up videos of him going into the gym. He's, you know, I seen Rashford doing the same thing when he first broke into the team, and you can see that the the um, the ambition is there to become a, a good first team player for United. So yeah, I'd sub in Ilanga, and Scott McTominay just has to go. I'm sorry, he's a passion merchant. The guy can't play CDM. He can't play box to box. He can't play attacking midfielder. I seen Ten Hag put him as a striker. He can't even play a striker. He loses possession of the ball. You know Scott McTominay is going to get a yellow card or a red card every single game he plays. He's just not quality. And then when you put McTominay and Fred together, it's just chaos. The two Calamity brothers together just equals chaos. <laughs> One without the other is okay, but when you put them both together, it's just a recipe for disaster. But, but, so. it is, it is real quickly, though, remember McTominay, first half of the season, or I think it was like mm-hmm. maybe first 15 games, whatever, Remember yeah. him in midfield with Ericsson, yeah? He was actually yeah. doing all right. Yeah, he was. Remember, and there was a point he was. where he was like Casemiro at the team. Exactly yes, I, I, I agree. Look, look, and, Maguire, and Maguire was nowhere to be seen. Felix. Hold on, hold on, right? See. He was keeping Casemiro out of the team, but Casemiro has been integrated into the, into Ten Hag's system, right? And yes, Scott McTominay was doing well because, like I said, I think Ten Hag is a, he's he's Harry Potter. He's a miracle worker. He made Rashford good. He made uh, Dalo and Wan Bissaka good. He made Luke Shaw good. He made Fred good. So I I know he can do. He he did the same with McTominay, you know, but. A, a, a cheater doesn't change his spots or a leper doesn't change his spots, whatever it is that they say. Um, and just going back to what you said as that uh, McTominay next to Ericsson was, was good. Likewise, Maguire next to Martinez was also good. He kept clean ah. sheets and Martinez was, Martinez was cleaning up for him. I'm I sorry, mean, I'm sorry. But we're sorry. Mm, that was, that he's was. Beating he's beating, he's beating yeah, I think, I think Martinez, hold on. Martinez and Maguire now, I think, have played four or five games together. And I think they've kept, kept about three or four clean sheets. I think it was only maybe in the Europa or one Premier League game that they didn't keep a clean sheet together. So at yeah, the yeah, start, bro. yes, bro, it was rocky. 2-1 is Brighton. Maguire was shocking, shocking. He was he was uh, not covering any running. Martinez right. had to follow all the runners. Maguire like, was trying to have a free like, roll. Like, like, like I said, I, I agree. Against Brentford, 4-0, Maguire was absolutely shocking, man. He was not um, doing the thing where you take responsibility and help your new signing. He was leaving all responsibility to Martinez. I, 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 completely, I completely agree. And I think this is where people are, are not... Um, analyzing uh how we're playing especially because we're now playing with a high line and yeah. Maguire is a is a low block uh center back yeah. right so if there's <clears throat> If we're playing low block and there's pressure coming onto him, he's fine because he doesn't have to run back or chase back or anything like that. So he's okay. Now, when we're playing a high line, he does need someone to cover up for him. And for a long amount of time, we've seen Lindelof doing it, which I, I think Lindelof is so underrated. I'd start Lindelof over Maguire anyway, but I think Lindelof was so underrated. Um, He was doing all the hard work for Maguire. Now, yeah. with Martinez, Martinez does the same thing, does all the hard work for Maguire. And you have to realize the centre-back partnership, it's, it's a yin and yang there has to be a balance you know so mm-hmm. one has to clean up for the other you look at Liverpool sure. um, Van Dijk wasn't there or Matip wasn't there to clean up for Van Dijk and they kept getting exposed so I think recently there has been a partnership with Martinez and Maguire that when they've played and we've played a high line Martinez knows okay I have to clean up I have to pick up for this guy remember um, Mourinho said it uh, was it with Luke Shaw or whatever that Maguire needs to understand that he has to be able to pick up for Luke Shaw and he wasn't doing that and we were getting exposed especially on that left hand side I remember the Liverpool game Luke Shaw Maguire that game we lost was a 5-0 five, 5-4-1 five five, yeah. yeah. they got Just absolutely quick, exposed though, sorry for this but yeah, yeah. But Maguire yeah if you start him like you're saying we have to do low block yeah that's the thing you, you made the Liverpool comparison yeah but mm-hmm. I've seen where Matic can clean up for Van Dijk or Van Dijk has cleaned up for Matic. When they were on mm-hmm. form, like recently it's not worked because they seem to be burning out. But with mm-hmm. Maguire, you have to change, like, like you're saying, you have to change the whole philosophy to low block. So if you're starting Maguire, 
We can't even see Ten Hag football. But, but not necessarily yeah. because I mean, I mean, the last, the last, the last game, the last game Martinez and Maguire played, we played a high line, and you still seen the Ten Hag football against Fulham, and there was another game in. Oh, who was it? Uh, was Fulham, another... I'm sorry, I think I'm watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah Kuruzian. Yeah, no. We didn't do anything. The hardly, hardly did anything. We were relying on counter attack for that game. Maguire, yeah, no, there was like, another game. Though. The Maguire, the Maguire Martinez combination. I gotta just say the Maguire Martinez combination is it's it's just really bad because you there was moments where Maguire left Martinez exposed to Mitrovic and and you know Mitrovic got a header and it was just one of those things where it, you know the 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 partnership that you know that Varane and uh, Martinez have they always work on those things to minimize the 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 aerial moments where 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 Martinez is facing like somebody that that is gonna beat him in a, you know in an aerial ball so it's like my yeah. Maguire positionally is just like all over the place and I just want to just say real quick um um I know that they, they there's other people right now that just came in right now. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't. And I'd like to also welcome the opinion of my boy Omo into the building. Omo, are you hearing the, the what we're talking about right now, <laughs> bro? And why uh, you, so, uh, you can't you can't take this guy's opinion because this guy still wants Anthony Martial for us. This guy is an Anthony Martial stand, so you can't take his opinion seriously. I, I'd rather have him He's... over Maguire starting, bro. Sorry, man, but could it. Let's see, let's see. Ma- Martial's, is... Martial's coming back. Martial at sea. <laughs> what? Oh, 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 oh. Okay, here, 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 here. Over. Oh, this is what we've been doing. Over. <laughs> Just hold on. Let me see this. There we go. All right, we go. We go. We go. Go ahead and uh, and spin the wheel. And then from there, like, I'm going to ask a, a trivia question because, like, we're almost um, at the end of the uh, of the stream. So I want to make sure trivia that... trivia we... question. That wasn't even a trivia question. That was a brutal... That was like playing Mortal Kombat yeah, for the first that... time against <laughs> Prime Raiden. Just, just <laughs> as a disclaimer, I actually would never start Maguire, but just because no, of the question... Said, no, no, because of the question... Yeah. Because of the choices I was given was why yeah. I went with Maguire, but I would never you start, with Magu- start, start yeah. Lindelof. Lindelof before Maguire every, any day. Omo, Omo, without explaining why, you have three choices, bro. I mean, you, you have this choice. Um, start, sub, or sell. Uh, uh, Maguire, um, freaking Elanga, Maguire, and, Elanga um, and McTominay. McTominay. I'm selling McTominay. I'm subbing in Langa and I'm starting Maguire. Oh wow! I, I think I'm about to leave the stream. I'm just going to sit back for a minute because Kuda's. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to stop my, McTominay. McTominay's not good nowhere. Maguire is shit. Though. Okay. All right. Have you right seen now. Maguire and Sabissa that like, previous matches? He's yeah. terrible. He's he's a bad. Sell him immediately. Immediately, I will sell him. Yeah. I was. I let him go on a free. But oh, Omo, oh, you have oh, to oh. play low block football for Maguire. McTominay can still play in a high press. McTominay cannot play, play football. He's not a footballer. He's not a match. He's not a footballer. He doesn't he'll even play this. He'll be st- he'll be starting centre back for my country tomorrow. At least give me some painkillers now. You know what? You're Yo. right. You're right. He's gonna play centre back for Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Let's spin the wheel real quick. I want to ask a question. Real. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go and see who we're gonna ask. We're gonna ask Omo this. For, oh, okay. So let's be brief on this on this um round real quick, and then see if we can squeeze in also another question at the end. So, all right, Omo, you you can only choose one Manchester United player. Okay, we're talking about Manchester United players for this question. So you. Can can only choose one injury prone player to have played his whole career injury free. Who would you pick? You're, you ain't know. You already Black know gloves. It's Anthony Martial. Yeah. Black gloves. Black gloves. Cold AM snowy night in Manchester. Black you go with Martial. You know the guys. <laughs> Damn, damn. All right, all right, all right. Martial is taken. All right, let's go ahead and pass the question to who is going to get the question next. Martial is taken, guys. So, uh, Eddie, who are you going with? <clears throat> so, injury prone player, yeah. Manchester United injury prone player. <laughs> uh, 
I mean, the thing is, I mean, the, the thing, uh, I don't know, I don't know. Because we've had, like, Varane, he's, like, sometimes he gets uh, injured, like, especially the first season, you were getting, like, little niggly mm. injuries. This this season, yeah, has been better. Um, so maybe that that doesn't that he doesn't count now. Uh, you know what? Yeah, controversial yeah. one. I don't know if this might even be worse than the Maguire choice from from oh, this no. one. But Phil Jones, if we could see him again, getting in right. there with the passion, you know, yeah, yeah, Phil Jones over yeah. Maguire. Yeah. At least he can run. At least you know Phil, Phil Jones, Jones does nice sports run, country now. Yeah, and I've not seen him turn like a boss. He's actually got uh, agility. And you can flag. <laughs> the red flag. The red flag. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you know it's so <laughs> 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 wait, 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 wait. Hasn't Jones won a Premier League with us? Am I wrong? He has. Yeah. Yes. He has. He has. Yeah. Guys. Come on. Okay, no, all right. right. Of, like five relegations, guys. Come on, man. Okay. All and right. this is like kind of good. I ain't even gonna lie. <laughs> 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 you're right, you're right, you're right. He's, he's a Premier League winner. I should put some respect on Phil Jones's name. You're right. That clip, get, that clip gets me everything. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, all right. Let's do let, um um all right. Uh let's spin the I'm wheel hoping, again. I'm just hoping Kudos doesn't have who I've got in mind. Ooh. I'm begging he doesn't. Ooh, ooh. Oh thank God. Mines right. is actually someone who is part of, perhaps, like, depending on opinion, mine is Grace's team. Mines is Owen Hargreaves. Oh, okay. Nice. Good choice. Okay. Under, underrated, underrated midfielder. Um, brilliant signing from Bayern Munich. We got him dirt cheap. Mm. I like that. Came in, came, to be, the fact is, though, he came, like, concerned how old he was as well, the fact that he came in slid into our midfield. Mm. He'd play on the right midfield if we needed to as well, if we were playing 4 4 2. If we played 4 3 3, he could slot in as a right sided central midfield player beside Carrick and Scholes or Anderson, depending on who played. And also, as well, this guy, he was that he was that supported at the time. He, even though he had major injuries, he still got to start the Champions League final and he was crucial to us beating Chelsea, who were probably the second best team in Europe at the time behind us. Like, they were that good a team. So I look at it and I think, considering what this guy does, so Andy scored a beauty of a free kick as well. Oh, I remember like, that I, one. I, like, I feel the one thing I feel sorry about Owen Hargreaves as well is Salis Ferguson is the GOAT always, but I think he got it completely wrong about Hargreaves the way he spoke about him. Like the injury, like the whole injuries and the fact it was a waste of time bringing this guy in. I think if he had kept him, we still would have done well with him in midfield because he was generally that good a player. Like top player in Bayern, like for Bayern Munich for five years. The only player that England actually had that scored out a bloody penalty when they go beat up Portugal for the second tournament in a row of penalties <laughs> came to us and he wins a league and a Champions League in his first season and he's labelled one of the worst signings in my head. Personally, I disagree. I think he was on. I think he was a baller. I've always liked Don Hargreaves and he's the best pundit on BT as well. The rest of them don't know what they're talking about. So oh. there's another thing as well. The man's got everything. Like the only thing he doesn't have is um, a manager's job. But <laughs> nah, hundred percent. Like for me, injury pro players. Owen Hargreaves is like nah, got you, brother. All, all, all right, Kudus, you're next. What? Or who are you going with? I, I, I might, I might just uh, break the rules a small bit. I'm gonna pick two players if that's okay. Oh yeah, that's uh, yes, sir. So the the first player is gonna be Paul Labile Pogba. The, the, this this guy in our midfield, like skills. Long shot, long pass, yeah. short pass, strength, tackling, everything he had it. The only thing he didn't have was staying fit. Um, yeah, Pogba was was a generational talent, academy player. Mm -hmm. There was just a, a, a certain love that I have for Pogba, and yeah, for me, I'd have loved to seen a proper fit Pogba. We could have we could have done wonder, wondrous things, especially if we partnered him with a proper DM. Um, and then the second player is Eric Bomba Clap by. If oh. Eric Bailly was oh. fit, we would not oh. have bought oh. Maguire. Oh. 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 Kudus, you redeemed yourself Bailly. today, yeah. bro. <laughs> <laughs> do, you know, do, you know, do you know, to this day, to this day, the game Eric Bailly played against Chelsea, where he sent, in his own penalty box, he sent Chelsea players flying. I was like, yo, this guy's got ice running through his veins. He, If we had Bailly, we would not have Maguire. I'm going to just leave it at that. 
Wow. Did you imagine Bayi and Martinez? Yeah, they, they, they would be butchering everyone. I remember one, 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 there was one moment, wow. yeah, one, one game where we played against Everton. And I remember Bayi went into a 50 50 challenge with Richarlison. Like, and Bayi used his right butt cheek and mm -hmm. knocked out Richarlison. Richarlison had to come <laughs> off the pitch. I don't know if you guys remember. It's the, only, it's, the only, it's the only ass that Richarlison's ever going to get in his life, and that includes his wife. But hey ho! Like, oh wow! Yeah. Yeah. This is going by. He's gone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. He, ain't come, he ain't coming back to me. He's sure. he's got noodle no, legs. Even noodles are stronger than he legs. So. If, if we're talking yeah. about psychotic, if we're talking about psychotics, I wouldn't mind the back three of Rojo, Bay, and um, Martinez. We mind that in the back three if you want pure Ooh. psychopaths. Yeah, Ooh. that's the that's the favela yeah. back three. You oh, don't mess with that yo. back three. Yeah, that's really that's oh, that's really 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 sick. Elephant, I gotta just say, guys, and the psychopath. Yeah, we we have to end the night on a super super quick um quick oh, hold on, answer. Hold on, quick. Actually, before before you go, you never gave us your answer. Who would you pick? Oh, oh. Ah, yeah. Alexis you. Alexis, Alexis Sanchez. Sanchez, good choice. Yeah, oh, yeah. Good there, choice. there was so much hype when, and like we got him at a time when I thought, like you know, <laughs> sorry, it's so dark over here. Yeah. I shouldn't even put myself on solo, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, we, I thought we got him at a time when he was just gonna go ahead and be in plug and play for us, and I was excited about that. That and oh, oh man, Alexis team, would have been so team cool. as well. Like it's crazy yeah. as well because like the one thing that made no sense right is this guy played. Predominantly left wing or striker for Arsenal, but he played right wing for Barcelona as well when he first went. Is it just compulsive nature not to play a natural right footed player for United on the right wing? Like, I would have played him on the right wing all day long. That means him and Pogba are nowhere near each other because they've just kept clashing for the same space. Yeah, so they kept their exit. Wing. It was, was one of those when things where, like, when in. Coutinho first arrived at uh, Barcelona and him and Messi were all just that heat maps were just yeah. <laughs> well, exactly intersecting that. too much. I always wanted Sanchez to, make it to work out, I was gutted that didn't work out with him. Yeah, man, I thought we were gonna get some dribbling, and then what we saw was uh, someone that was burning out. That was, <laughs> we're one yeah. of the worst signings, man. Uh, it's such a shame. All right. Yo, guys, 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 guys! I just gotta say real quick. Let's 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 plug our channels because we're gonna do the quick round of fire and then end the show as we're like, um, I'm doing that. So you know, anybody want to plug your Twitter, even your Twitter handles, whatever. You know, let's go ahead and uh, um, start with you, Kudus. Where can people find you if um, do you uh, want to find me? Yeah, Twitter Kudus underscore K I I Q U D U S underscore K I I. Yeah, follow me on Twitter. Sir, thank you so much. There you go. That's how you spell kudos. And if anybody's looking, and then let's go ahead and say Sancho's dad. <laughs> Almost. Listen, I don't know. Next. They go find him right here. You can find him also on Planet Fast. You know, you'll see him out there in them yeah. Twitter spaces. Reese, as it, as it, on Twitter, I'm just trolling people. Just, like, just mention Marshall. Once you mention Marshall, Omo appears. That's that's all exactly, you exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mention Sancho, I'm there. Mention Facundo, I'm there. <laughs> Reese. Baller. We're we're gonna get on just fine. Uh, Devils Rising on everything: YouTube, Twitch, and. Twitter as well, so thanks for yes. having me. Uh, that was a good laugh. I enjoyed that. Yeah. Of course, me too. Me too, Eddie. Yes, man. Yeah, you can find me, uh, Eddie's Football Waffle on YouTube. Uh, if you, yeah, if you're on Twitter, I'm Eddie O two two on Twitter. But uh, just yeah, subscribe to the YouTube Eddie's Football Waffle. I got like funny animations, funny reactions to Man United. I might branch out into other football teams as well. But I just want to say, yeah, thanks again for having me on a, a third happy hour, man. Right. Good time. Big up to the panel. Apart from when, you know, Omo and uh, Kudis were talking about Maguire. Big up to them, though. Apart from <laughs> <laughs> uh, Big up to Reese. <laughs> big, big up to Reese as well for the Football IQ. And, of course, Football Power Hour. Big up yourself. Everyone keep hitting the like, subscribe. Road to 500. Thanks again for having me on. Hey, hey, please, please, please. All right, all right. Let's go ahead and do the super, super quick round of fire. Let's go. Let's go. Let's. Who do we start with? Who do we get? I feel like it's going to be Omo. Omo, 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 Omo. Let's go ahead. You got to pick one super quickly. All right, my friend. Okay. 
Or they got a Bruno. Are you serious, Bruno? Elango Pelistri. Pelistri. Mino Zidane Iqbal. Mino. Hudson or Deitch. Who? Roy Hudson or Sean Deitch. Sean Deitch. I like the man, man. Pepper Club. Pepper Club. Pep, come on. Ancelotti or Jose? Ancelotti. Champions League winner all day. Um, um, hold on. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Good choice, good choice. Um, Xavi or Iniesta? Iniesta. Oh. Xavi or Iniesta? Iniesta. <laughs> what is and there it is, ladies and gentlemen. He got it. <laughs> Iniesta, bro. Iniesta. I, can't, I respect Chavi, but Iniesta, man. <laughs> uh, you got to go with it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how you guys feel. But you got to go with Iniesta. That's how I feel. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Let's go. Let's go. That's, that's hilarious, man. Bro, like I felt like Iniesta could do most of the things that Xavi could do and also score. All right, Reese. Yeah. Bring on. Reese, 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 Reese. All right, Reese. Let's go ahead and say Reese. Um Mikitarian or Barella? Barella. Chiellini or Bonucci? Bonucci. What? Antonio Conte press conference or Mourinho press conference? Mourinho press conference. All day. FIFA or Pro Evolution? Pro Evo. FIFA. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Get it, man. <mate. laughs> what? Pro Evo, bro. Pro Evolution, you can't. You need to make them, bro. You know, you, you know. It's not even a graphics are, question. Are you, how are you going to load up a game and you're picking Manchester Red versus Manchester Blue? Come on! Come on! Get out of here. Exactly. Exactly. All right. All right. <laughs> Let's go. I think it's probably going to be you, Kudus. All right. Let, wait, wait, wait. Uh, yeah, it's you. It's you. Uh, let, all right. Let's just spin the damn wheel. All right. Cool. I feel like it's going to be you, Kudus. Look at that. Oh, oh, my God. <laughs> Eddie, Eddie, Eddie. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Eddie, uh, why in Qatar, Morocco or Croatia? What? Say that again. Morocco or Croatia? Morocco. Casemiro or Partey? Casemiro, come on. Rashford or Haaland? Rashford. Rashford or Mbappe? Oh, shit. Rashford. No. Rashford. Come no. on. No. 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 I love Rashford. I love everything he's done this season. Bro. I love Bro. it. <laughs> but goodness. Bro, maybe go just captioned his nation to a 4 0 winners Netherlands. And you're telling me Rashford. You're telling me MBE Rashford. General no. Ben says, I'm in shock. Exactly. We're all in shock. <laughs> did he, did Eddie watch the, the, the World Cup final? Yeah. Mbappe. Did Mbappe. He... <laughs> You have the best player in the world, and Mbappe ran the final. Come on, <laughs> bro! Lifetime band says Kush. <laughs> Stop the cap. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So, Chris, are you ready? <laughs> yeah. Let's see how far I get. Okay. Uh... Okay. Rashford or Holland? Holland. Okay, okay. He'll bring in the numbers. We can't argue with that. Mbappe or Vinny? Mbappe. Okay, all right. We talked about that. Okay. Robertson or Chil Chilwell? Uh, Robertson. Jorginho or Shaka? Jorginho. Good. Edison or Allison? Allison. Edison. Shit, it's so bad. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Clarify. Edison or Allison, bro? Allison. Don't let me down. Allison. Okay. Edison is so shit. Okay. Try mini or Kamavinga. Oh, 
the right answer is Chouamini, but I love Camavinga. I love Camavinga. Okay, Madrid oh, or Barcelona? Madrid. Who, who is Barca? We, we were Boca Juniors or River Plate? River Plate. Modric or De Bruyne? Modric. All day. Rodrigo or Anthony? Rodrigo. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jaga Bonito. Has to be Rodrigo. I'm okay, sorry. okay, 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 okay. All right, all right, all right. Henry or Eto? Oh, Eto. You touched Michael or Van der Sar? Van der Sar. Bro, Kudus, you, have you seen Peter Schmeichel? Have you not seen Peter Schmeichel? Ladies and gentlemen, Kudus just messed <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. I love Van der Sar. I love Man United. All of them Man United legends, though. Anyway, anyway, yo, guys, I want to just say thank you, everybody, for tu for tuning in. I love you. Exactly. Edwin all day. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> the disrespect, bro. <laughs> Thank you, Big Rock, Kush, Little Yo Yo, Solo, Nile, everybody that tuned in and everybody that showed up and was part of this. I appreciate y'all and thank you. Thank you. The lights are gone. You can tell the sun is gone as we dark over here. Um, and um, I just want to just remind you don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. And uh, yeah, yo, if you want to be a part of this next time, yo, just shoot me a little message. It's easy to find me. And um, um, and and you know, let's 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 do this again next Friday. It's the Friday happy hour. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> We're waiting on the Qataris to say... <laughs> <laughs>